I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Lithium batteries are almost always safe to use, as long as you don't do anything super dumb with them, like charge them to 4.5 volts per cell, Alex Vanover. But then every so often you hear a story of somebody who, the battery was just sitting on the shelf, completely normal, and then without any warning, blah, lit on fire. How does that happen? The truth is that healthy lithium batteries will almost never do that. And those batteries that spontaneously lit on fire with no warning were actually giving warning signs that they were not safe to use for usually for a little while that either the person just didn't know how, how to interpret them or they maybe just ignored them because I just I screw it. It's a, it cost me 40 bucks. I'm not throwing it out. Just charge it. Just charge it up. It'll be okay. No. So today we're going to look at warning signs that your batteries are not safe to use and probably should be retired. The first sign that your battery is not safe to use is if you plug it into a cell checker and, well, <laughs> if any of the cells are below 3.0 volts per cell, in my opinion, it's time to retire it. Now, it's, there's no question that discharging a LiPo cell below 3.0 volts damages it. But you've probably heard stories of people who you left your goggles plugged in overnight, the battery was at zero volts, and then you did the thing where you charge it really slowly, you trickle charge it on nickel metal hydride mode, and then you switch to lipo mode and you get it back up, and it seems to hold voltage. And in fact, I have at least one pack, a little two cell that I use for goggles that I restored that way, and it's been fine for a long freaking time. But for the batteries that we use on our mini quads, I don't think you should do that. Number one, because anytime a cell has been damaged, the risk of it then spontaneously lighting on fire for no reason does go up and that you can't really quantify that risk. It just is a little bit higher than it was. But the other reason I don't think you should do that, you should recover lipos that you're used on quads. Another reason is that we really need the most performance we can get out of these. Our quads are really hitting these batteries hard. And anytime you discharge it below 3.0 volts per cell, the performance goes down, the internal resistance goes up. And so even if it does seem to hold voltage overnight and seems okay, it's not gonna fly as well as it would have. So by my standards, anytime a pack goes below 3.0 volts per cell, I think about whether it should be retired. And just because you finish the flight and the pack is above 3.0 volts per cell doesn't mean that it wasn't damaged. This pack here, which is what made me think about making this video, I was flying, this is a 6S pack, and the problem with 6S low KV is that you don't really notice any voltage sag until the very end of the battery life. It's kind of weird. So I was flying and because I'm not that used to 6S, I, like I know when I fly 4S, if I get down to 14 volts, I'm like, no, 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 no. If I see 13.6, I need to get down now. But I haven't really memorized the 6S voltages that way. It just, and so I was flying and everything seemed fine. And then suddenly the voltage started going 20, 19, 18, 17, and I landed real quick. And when I came back to the battery, all of the cells were above 3.0 volts. One of them just barely. What happens is that you go below 3.0 volts and then when the load is off, the battery's like, oh, okay, it recovers a little bit. But that cell has definitely been damaged. And I put the battery on the charger and I ran a storage program and brought it up to 3.8 volts per cell. I monitored it the whole time. Anytime you have a, a damaged cell or a, a damaged lipo, don't leave it alone in the room by itself, okay? But I brought it up to storage and I thought maybe I lucked out and it's gonna be okay. But the very next day, it was just sitting there on the bench when I plugged it in, it was, oh, see, it was not holding voltage. And that's a sign that a battery has bad cells. If you have a battery that's at storage or at full charge and you come back the next day and you see a significant drop in voltage on any of the cells, that cell has a problem and it's, maybe you should retire the battery. In a case like this, the cells dropped, but they're still holding voltage and you might think, oh, well, I could, I could probably charge it back up again and use it and maybe you could. But in this case, I've got a pack that was fully charged and I came back the next day and it's just, the cell is completely dead. Okay, 
This, to me, I would retire these packs. Now, some of you guys out there, you have the knowledge and the skill to just turn, just remove the bad cell, and you're going to turn this 4S into a 3S. That's okay. I mean, that carries its own risks, but if you know how to do it and you feel comfortable doing it, you absolutely can. So anytime a battery has been over-discharged or fails to hold voltage, or if you finish flying and like three of the cells are at 3.8, 3.79, and one of the cells is at like 3.4, if you don't get relatively equal discharge over the, over the whole discharge cycle between the cells, then that's a problem for you. The other question that people ask is, when a battery has physical damage, how do you know if it's safe to use? And in order to address that question, I've grabbed this battery. This is a, a Rotorat Hypo battery that, it's one of Ladrib's batteries that somehow came home with me from, Rot from Rampage. I don't know how it happened. And you can see that it's pretty beat up. But is it safe to use? Here's how you can answer that question. I'm gonna get my charger, which is in this case, it's an ISDT Q6. And I'm going to plug this battery in. I, there we go. And immediately I notice that all of the cells are at about 4.21, 2.3, 2.3. So probably he's charging to 4.25 volts per cell. That's a little bit of an overcharge and it will reduce the life of the battery, but it isn't inherently unsafe like charging to 4.5 volts per cell, which is just basically guaranteed to light your battery on fire. So, but notice this guy's at 4.17. Cell number four is not holding voltage. Now I've, I also sometimes charge to 4.25 volts per cell and I've noticed that a lot of packs, they'll drift down to 4.21 or 4.20 if you leave them charged for a long time, which you really shouldn't do. So the fact that this cell has dropped down is not inherently problematic, but these other cells are holding at about 4.22. So why is this one so low? That's suspicious to me. But then the, what you can do to see if the physical damage to your pack is excessive is measure the internal resistance. And in order to do that on the Q6, I need to, oh, hang on. I need to plug in and actually start a charge cycle. Some chargers will measure internal resistance just as its own program. This is, you have to be charging. And then while you're charging, we can look here and in a second, the internal resistance will show up. And what you wanna look for is if the internal resistance of one cell is way, way different than the other cells, that probably means that cell is damaged. But if you've got a pack that's a little beat up and the internal resistance of all the cells is basically the same, then that's it, probably it's okay to use, no guarantees. And here we are, the internal resistance, 11, 8, 8, and 18. This is pretty significantly different. And that's the same cell that wasn't holding voltage. So. My impression is that this pack is not safe to use because it's got a bad cell four. Some Drew would keep flying this pack and probably be fine. That's the thing. With the lipos, the risk slowly goes up, but the risk of a spontaneous fire is relatively low and probably this pack will never spontaneously light on fire. But there's no way to know for sure and that's the issue. And that's why for me, the price of a $25 or even a $35 battery is not worth the increased risk of burning my house down, losing all of my possessions, or God forbid, losing the life of a family member or a pet in a house fire. And if you look up LiPo house fire on the internet, you'll see some true, when one of these batteries goes up, it is not kidding. It, you get huge gouts of flame that will engulf anything nearby. It's no joke. So whenever I have a battery that fails anyone, they get one shot to make me suspicious and they're done, they're fired. No second chances for lipos is my policy. You got one like this that isn't holding voltage, it's done, kill it, retire it. You got one with a bad cell, well, I just kill them because I don't like to split, split packs. You could split packs, but here's how I kill them. Let's close the video with showing you how I kill the battery. This device here is called a wire wound resistor. Uh, put the exact link to this product in the video description. I think it's a half ohm 60 watt resistor. I'm not sure, but in the past I did the math to find out that if you plug a four cell battery or a three cell battery into this, you'll get, um, it's usually, it's a few amps of current and basically I plug it in and I just leave it here until it, just leave it here overnight and it's dead. Sorry, Drew, I'm killing your battery.
To be honest with you guys, this is not the absolute safest thing I could be doing, discharging these batteries in a closet where if a fire were to happen, some a lot of flammable stuff is nearby. The safest place to do this is out on a driveway or something. Um, but um, my theory is that you know, you're discharging the battery and a, th a two or three amp discharge is probably not going to light off even a damaged cell. It's low enough that it's not going to hurt it. Um, that's, you know, that's just the sort of calculus I use for safety. And if a month from now I burn my house down from doing this, then I'll say I made them a huge mistake. But usually I discharge the packs and kill them before they are terribly, terribly badly damaged. And so as a result, they just sit here and then, you know, an hour or two later, they're dead. And I just leave them hanging there for a little while and then I throw them away. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't throw them away. You should take them to like a local hardware store or Batteries Plus. They can, uh, they can, they can just dispose of them or recycle them for you. Another way to discharge a battery with a bad cell is if you have a smoke stopper light bulb like this one. I don't think you should try this with the um, the polyfuse based, the light, the solid state quote smoke stoppers like that B engineering little yellow thing that you buy from Ray Day Quads. But if you have a light bulb, what you do is you plug the battery in to your smoke stopper, and then you're going to short circuit these two prongs to each other. So you can do that with an alligator clip, you know, if you if you like, or you can do it, I just do it like with a pair of tweezers like this. Now, some of you are about to freak out because normally if you do this to a lipo, it will be bad. The fire will come out. But remember, this light bulb is a current limiting device. It will limit the current to about two or three amps. So when I do this, the light bulb lights up. Oh no, that's a six cell. It's a 12 volt light bulb. I'm going to destroy the light bulb. It seems like it didn't die. Okay, don't do this with a six cell. But with a four cell, you can kill it with your smoke stopper as well. And it'll just discharge it in a few hours. So you just put that somewhere where the light doesn't bother you. Now, some of you may feel like I'm being overly conservative here, but you really need to listen to what I'm saying, especially if you use parallel charge boards. And the reason for that is that when the batteries are plugged in to the parallel charge board, and by the way, this is the JB parallel charge board, and it has a whole bunch of safety precautions built, like these polyfuses that help protect against excess current flow. But what they can't protect against is if you got batteries plugged into a parallel charge board and one of them has a cell that goes bad. Like this guy here, I had fully charged it and just then just the next day I checked it and one cell was at zero volts, totally dead. If it had been plugged into a parallel charge board at the time, it would have killed cell one on all the other batteries in the parallel charge. That's not a defect in the parallel charge board, that's just how parallel circuits work. So even if you are willing to take the risk of burning your house down, you also have to be aware that it, it could kill all the batteries and your, you know, all your expensive batteries could die if one of them has a cell that takes a dump. And by, that's, some people talk about, oh, parallel charging makes your batteries unhealthy. Parallel charging doesn't have to make your batteries unhealthy. You just have to do it right. And one of the risks is if any one battery has a bad cell, it can damage the cells on all the others. So that's certainly something to keep in mind about if the risk of burning your house down and this wasn't enough to convince you. Hopefully now you have a better idea of signs that you need to retire a battery. Don't give them a second chance to burn your house down. Don't give them a first chance. The minute a battery shows any sign that it's not healthy, just retire it. Well, that's my advice. If you're interested in any of the stuff you saw in this video, including that wire wound resistor, got a link down in the video description. This guy, the ISDT Q6, it's a nice little portable charger and it can measure internal resistance or hey, the JBF4 parallel charge board. Or, or this BG8S battery, which is a great battery checker. Links down in the video description. And yeah, they are affiliate links because this is, I do this for a living. I got to pay the rent, guys. And you click in those affiliate links before you make any purchase, not just these items, but any purchase you're going to make from any of those vendors, Race Day Quads, Rota Riot Store, Amazon. You click those affiliate links and then go buy anything you want and I get a little bit of money. No, it doesn't cost you anything and I sure do appreciate it. That's going to do it for this video. Happy flying. This is an infrared image of Drew's pack as it's being discharged. And notice that those right hand two cells are way, way hotter than the, uh, than the others. 
that's probably cell number four getting super hot as it discharges. And uh, somewhere out there, Drew is going, no, why are you killing my battery? It would have been fine. But this, to me, is just more validation that this is the right thing to do. And for the, by the way, just for those of you who are concerned about me discharging in my closet, this is, I mean, it's not like I don't sit there and pay attention to it as it's discharging till it gets down to a safe voltage. And if it shows any signs of, of overheating or crackling or popping, I, I quick take it outside. So small, small justification there. I would never leave this unattended. Uh -huh.